Hi everybody, welcome to John McCoy Art YouTube channel. Um, I had somebody ask in part five of Learn to Draw with Andrew Loomis Fun with a Pencil. Um, a lot of these videos I talk about perspective, how there's an, a perspective to spheres and the faces that we're drawing have linear perspective in them and we can understand how to draw lines around the ball and so forth based off of perspective. So somebody asked a question about that. Peter WL3TM asked about um, what I meant by that because I had drawn in part five, I had drawn one of the, the ball, the Blook balls with a box in front of it and was briefly talking about perspective. So what I'm gonna do in this video is um, show how a sphere exists inside of a, of, cu of a cube and how from that we can understand that the lines of axis basically apply to a sphere. So this is a quick drawing I did, a two-point perspective, a bunch of cube-like objects. Not ex Maybe they're not perfect geometric cubes, but I did my best to draw a bunch of different cubes. Um, and you can see how they have a, a vertical and they have horizontal axis depending on these point two-point perspective. I'm not going to get into depth about perspective yet, but what we're going to do today is try to extract a, a, um, a sphere out of a cube or demonstrate how a sphere exists within a cube or vice versa and that and from a cube we can understand verticality and horizontality because we have these horizontal lines and these vertical lines so if we can overlap a sphere into this or put a sphere inside of this cube we can begin to understand better about how it has axes and those axes help us to draw the faces okay so if you've seen some of my one of my videos about how to draw ellipses, that'll play a role in this. So if you if you want to watch that too, you can see that that'll help understand how we're going to be drawing ellipses here. I'm not going to measure. The only thing I'm going to use this for is straight lines. If I want to draw a straight line, but I'm going to eyeball the midpoints on this. So we'll take this three B, so it can be visible. I'm going to guess the midpoints on all four lines that make up just this square, and we'll go square by square. I'm gonna guess the midpoint to be there, midpoint to be here, midpoint to be here, midpoint to be here. And now we're gonna use that technique I, I talked about of drawing the ellipse. So you have one ellipse. Okay, let's do it again on this side. I'm gonna grasp the midpoint, 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 midpoint. We use the same one for that one. Draw the second ellipse. Keep in mind, it may seem unnatural to you, but this tries this arc tries to bulge out as much as it can towards this corner of the cube. It may not look right, but when you've drawn the whole ellipse, it shows that that is true. So it tries to come out all the way here and then starts to come back. It doesn't feel right when you're drawing it, but when you see the overall, you can do that to trace over to see how it is in ellipse. Same for the top, guessing the midpoints. You can. The thing is, is there's no point in measuring it because if you measure an equidistant line, it's not going to be the midpoint because there's some foreshortening at play. In other words, this line should be longer than this line. So I did it slightly. There's a slight distortion. Okay, so we'll draw the ellipse here. Picture yourself as being a wood carver in the, or Michelangelo, and you've got a block of marble here. We're extracting shapes out of this. Okay, we'll do the bottom now. Midpoint, we've already drawn two of the midpoints. Draw another midpoint, which should be this. If you drew a line straight down, it would create the midpoint. So I'm just guesstimating just to, for the sake of not taking too much time. If you wanna draw the lines out, and plus not taking too much of our real estate, our drawing real estate, because if we draw too many lines, we're not gonna know what's going on. Okay, so let's do this one too. There's midpoints right here. Again, not a perfect cube, but this will, this will illustrate the point that I'm trying to make. And then one more over here. Seems kind of crazy that we're drawing all this. But now have you seen those dice that aren't perfect? They have dice that are like this that have sharp corners and they have rounded off dice. So if we are a wood carver and we 
cut all these little extra pieces off, we would have more of a sphere. Okay, so if we kept doing this infinitely and analyzing this, we have these, these vertical axes on each one of these ellipses. We have horizontal ones. And we're basically seeing how the sphere is appearing here. So let me erase this a little bit so you can see how we are getting a sphere out of this. Because I can still see the general shape because I'm not completely erasing it, but I'm giving myself a little more real estate to draw on. Oops. So that we can see how we get a sphere out of the middle of this. Another way to look at this, so you can still see our ellipses vaguely, is that we identify the midpoint of this and we create in the exact center a vertical line that goes through. So if we draw the axis on the bottom and the top using our midpoints that we can still see, we've identified the center and the center, and this line goes right through here. Actually, yeah, okay. I, can, I don't know if I want to draw it to blue. That'd be weird. Okay. So now we're going to draw the same thing. We're going to identify the midpoints right here on this plane and on this plane in the back. Midpoint would be right around here. And what we're going to end up with, we're going to create a three-dimensional cross. And from here and then on this plane... You can see, kind of see where this is going. So now we have this interior. Let me just, actually, I'm going to do it in blue so you can see the difference. We have this, which goes from this plane to this plane right in the center. We have this one, which goes from center to center. And then we have another one that does that. So we've gone pretty much in all directions. Now what happens is we can draw, we can then identify that there is a ellipse here. And you're seeing how what I'm going where I'm going with this is that the circ the sphere exists within. So and this one's a little exaggerated. That one goes all the way here it's a little hard to see actually and so if you were to draw this out basically at the end of the day you're going to end up with a circle that exists or a sphere I'm sorry that exists within the cube and that has an axis to it these points on this line are the furthest reaching faces of the sphere. And this line represents as if you were to draw, well, say one of these lines on here. So if you wanted to draw that, you have the arch. You've also created an interior ellipse that goes like this, and that line creates that one. And then that one is if it was to imaginarily go around something like that. So you've ended up creating a sphere in the middle of a cube. And this is how we understand, let's erase some of this again so we can see what's going on with this. Just a little bit so we can still have some of our lines from beneath. A lot going on there, but you can see the information from all of our drawing is appearing here, and that helps us to understand things. So, how does this make sense in terms of perspective? Well, you've established that a sphere does have perspective to it. It has these lines and these, act, these dimensions that all still point to the horizon vanishing points, which means that if you want to draw an Andalumis head on top of this, you can take one of these guys, let's do this one, or this one, doesn't matter. Let's just do our own here. We can draw the ball 
like so. And we're thinking in terms of perspective because when we draw a line here, it has to conform to this vanishing point and it goes around and it conforms to this vanishing point based off of the ellipse that we have in there. Then when we draw the midline, it conforms to that perspective vanishing point and then it comes down here like so and begins to go back towards that vanishing point again. So that's how a sphere works, basically. And then any feature we draw on top of it, and this is where I come to that comment that was made in the video, which makes sense. I drew something like a cube on top of this. So if we were to repeat that, and let's say the nose is a cube, the nose following the Bluck ball begins here and then curves down following these lines and then has also this curving line. And then if we extrude it, following the lines of perspective, this is where a ruler may come in handy to understand this. This lines up with this point and comes out like so. Let's say we're drawing Pinocchio. Okay, if we were drawing Pinocchio, his nose is following the ax axis of perspective. This is like Pinocchio combined with Blue Ball. So his nose comes out, let's just say, okay, and if we want to draw, where does his nose stop growing? We're following this vanishing point. And these lines still must be vertical because we didn't use three point perspective. And then we'll draw the second bottom line of that cube. His nose exists within this rectangle we've created. And we can draw a little ellipse here to represent the tip of the nose and somewhat of an ellipse here to represent the cone. That we have a cone of a nose drawing here. And that's, no, that's Pinocchio's nose. So, solidifying that in, we have drawn Pinocchio's nose onto a Bluck ball. I did not foresee the video going in that direction, but here we are drawing Pinocchio's nose on a Bluck ball. And uh, there. So now let's go ahead and finish Pinocchio by drawing the eyes. The eyes would be happening on either side, but you can see how it follows perspective, which probably should clarify pretty well your, your question that you had. We'll just say Pinocchio is got his eyes closed. He's sleeping here. Draw some little eyelashes. And then we will draw a mouth here. So if we want to do the divided ball and plane method, we can follow the ear line here, we got the ear, and we draw the jaw line, and we draw the center line, which goes down, hair line here, mouth, okay, we got the and then chin here, like so. We got the little mouth here, and uh, upper lip, lower lip. Let's give him an eyebrow as well. that lip is completely blocked by the nose extending but there you have it there's Pinocchio great did not foresee it going in that direction but that does explain how all of the features of the head follow into perspective and we can use the cube to understand that so I hope you guys have enjoyed this video give it a like and subscribe to the channel until next time God bless